looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm Light Coach Lisa, holistic nutritionist and life coach, helping to lighten the load of life's challenges. Oh, wowie wow. Today, really, I was listening to the intro of the show there, and it talks about simple and easy ways to live a healthy life. Now, this topic affects every single body, and like, and I mean body, animals, people, plants on the planet. And what is this all about? So, Dehydration is becoming a health complication, which is one of the lines in in, uh, in the book that we're going to be talking about. But that that's actually a shocking statement. I love that because it really is. Dehydration is becoming a health complication, and is eight glasses the way to go? I had to had to have this guest and this topic um, it, for all of you guys because. That is one of the number one questions. Not only am I asked, like, how much water do we need? Is it necessary? But it's also something that I'm challenged on all the time because I go through my life and I don't get eight glasses of water in, but I always, you know, back it up and defend, but I eat this way and I do this and I do that. So I am so happy to be able to introduce you to um, Dr. Dana Cohen, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about her, but I'll tell you why. She has written the most incredible book. I actually get so excited when I'm reading it that I start jumping up and down and I have to run around telling people every line that I'm reading, and it's called Quench. Like, how cool is that? That's a great name. Eight glasses a day is not the day. The book is called Quench. We are talking about being fatigued, dropping weight, healing the body through new signs of for optimum hydration. So let me share a little bit about Dr. Dana Cohen, and then we are jumping right into all these really cool everyday life things that affect your hydration and dehydration. So Dr. Dana Cohen, MD, is a nationally renowned internal and integrative, yep, integrative medicine specialist whose multidisciplinary approach has helped treat thousands of patients using a variety of conventional and complementary therapies. In practice for nearly two decades, Cohen trained under the late Dr. Robert Atkins, author of Iconic, Dr. Atkins, The New Diet Revolution, and Dr. Ronald L. Hoffman, a pioneer of integrative medicine and founder of the Hoffman Center in New York City. She she has on-air experience as a radio host and previously co-hosted Healthy for Good, radio show that aired in New York City and New Vitality Live, a nationally syndicated show on WOR Radio Network. Cohen is the author of Quench, as we just said, Beat Fatigue, Drop Weight, and Heal Your Body Through the New Science of Optimum Hydration. And that just came out. Like, I have my hands on it, and it's the most amazing book everybody needs to read. Welcome, Dr. Dana Cohen. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I have chills all over. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Your your book. I can, you know what, I wasn't ready for this. Like, it, honestly, I was out of my own ego. I was like, I'm so having this show so I can tell, you know, everybody that picks on me for not drinking enough. But it turned into so much more because you literally talk, oh, my gosh, I, like, I'm so excited. There's so many topics in there that you can talk about from skin brushing to sweating and how to replace it to food and diet. And you have a five-day plan on how to rehydrate your body. And it's so simple and fun. It's so simple. You know, we wrote this book. We really wrote this book for the masses. Um, yeah. and, and it's, and it's going to affect from everybody from, you know, the elderly to the really sick to the athletes and really healthy people and everybody in between. Um, and as you said, yeah, hydration affects everybody and we need, we're not doing it right. And I am here to say that drinking eight glasses a, a day is not the most effective way. And I love that you made that statement because not only am I was on one side saying, okay, well, I maybe I only have four, but I have all these things. But there are people who will drink two to three liters, but they're not absorbing it. So you've you've got both. Yes, exactly. Um, and that's the whole key. The key is absorption and retention, and how you know how does that water get into your cells? Um, so that that is the key. You you know, and so a lot of the book is. Um, 
is logical and and it's things that we've already sort of known but now we have real science to back it up and really understand why we're doing what we're doing and you know the interesting part is my co-author is a is a cult Gina Bria she's a cultural anthropologist so um, she studied how desert cultures hydrate and they certainly do not eat eight glasses of uh, drink <laughs> eight glasses of water a day you know so, um, so it's interesting. There's lots of anthropological stories in the book, and, and and evidence, and lots of evidence from my own patients. And then it's there's lots of easy to read science, and I think it's fun and interesting, and um, and we can talk a lot about it. And we, oh my goodness. And so here's the thing: the, you, of all the stories, or let's talk, say topics, you mentioned somebody specific. You mentioned seniors, and at first the, I was thinking, I was gonna, but we will tell everybody like how to how can dehydration affect somebody? Because that's first, I want people to identify like, oh my gosh, this could actually be affecting me. But here's a really interesting thing. Anybody who has a pet and has brought them to a veterinarian, you know, gone, what is the one, like the, one of the first things they do? They check for hydration and if, and if there's, they lift the skin and they check the gums. And, and that's the very, I know that's the very first thing they ever do to look at my cats. And immediately I'll say, you know what, it's, they're dehydrated. We gotta get them an IV fluid if this is the situation. So. Dehydration is literally our life force. It's a part of our vitals. Um, but it also is a, lo a lot of low-level things that we could be suffering from every day. And if you could let us, tell us, what could we be experiencing from a, a slight level of dehydration to a massive level of dehydration? Okay. So let me just start up front by saying the book doesn't address the overt dehydration where you are in the hospital needing IV fluids. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that is a medical emergency. That, that is not what we're talking about here. We are talking about this chronic low-grade dehydration that affects almost all of us. And, and the reason is, you know, we live in a different, different environments than we used to live in. You know, we, we, we are all in the heat, in the air conditioning, in the, um, the electronic equipment that surrounds us. We're sitting on our butts all day. We're, we're medicating ourselves. We're eating processed foods. You know, all of these things are contributing to our, our hydration. And, and we really are living in a much more dehydrating world than we used to, even just even five years ago. So, um, so this low-grade dehydration, um, let's talk about, well, what does that mean for us? So mm -hmm. thirst. Let's, I, want, I like to talk about thirst first because everybody says, oh, I'm not thirsty, um, mm -hmm. therefore I'm not dehydrated. If you're thirsty, you're already overtly dehydrated, you know, so it's not the best thing to look at. Also, we've learned to ignore our thirst or override our thirst on purpose. You know, we don't want to get up and have to go to the bathroom, so we don't drink, especially elderly people, because it's a hassle for them, which yeah. is the wrong thing to do. Um, and so, so thirst is not the best way. Um, but some of the, the things that we talk about in the book and some of the things that I've really noticed, some more... Uh, quick and first signs of, of this low-grade dehydration is fatigue and brain fog. You know, mm -hmm. um, think about that afternoon fatigue that you're feeling. It may not be a drop in blood sugar where you need to go grab a candy bar. You know, probably yeah. a better choice would be to, to get better hydrated. Um, and we'll talk about what, what that means. Um, or drink water. We're not saying not to drink water. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but there's, there's a more effective way, and we'll, we'll talk about that in one sec. So, so um, brain fog and fatigue, for me, are, are some of the first signs. Um, other things that you can look at are um, joint pain, um, let's, uh, trouble losing weight, headaches, dry skin, chapped lips, even bad breath. Like these are sort of things that, that could be this little niggling low-grade dehydration. Um, some easy things that you can do to check for that, and I love this is, this is sort of not, nothing controversial about this. Look at your urine. Your urine should be pale yellow, color, pale yellow in color um, and not dark orange or bright yellow. If it's bright yellow and you're taking a B vitamin, that's a totally different story. I, I was going to ask you about vitamins, and, and we can tag this on to the end of the thing, because a lot of people say, well, if I'm drinking too, so much water and I have to pee a lot, then am I just peeing out all the money that I just spent on my vitamins? So if you could talk about, yes, yes. inform us so, about that. <laughs> Okay, well, so the truth is we're meant to pee every two or three hours, um, and, and, it's, you know, and it's important. So, number one, you're getting up and moving, which is the second half of the equation of hydration, which we can get into in a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we're meant to pee every two or three hours, um, and your pee is supposed to be that, that nice pale yellow color. So, yeah, you are, 
you know, you're, you are metabolizing your, whatever you're putting into your body. Um, but, but then again, you know, we're, we're, we're holding on to what we need is, is the best I can say. We don't really know how much of our supplements we are. And I'm a supplement girl, by the way, like I take a ton oh. of supplements. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so it's, uh, you, you got to sort of weigh the balance. Um, I still think, you know, there's, I, I see, I measure levels of certain things. So if you're taking supplements, it's, it's good to find an integrative or functional medicine uh-huh. doctor that knows how to look at whether or not you're having the right um, amounts of these vitamins and, and you're not overdosing okay. or underdosing, that kind of thing. So, so tea uh, doesn't always, the output, I love that there's a line in the book, it's talking about, yeah, we think about how much is the input, but output is important too, because we are trying to get rid of those things, because could, if, we, if we're dehydrated, that also means we're not getting rid of stuff, which could also make us sick as well, and, and well, tired and low energy. Yeah, I mean, hydration is the, it's, it, you know, I love the word homeostasis, that basically what it means is the balance of, of intra and extracellular water in our cells. It is the foundation of, of, of life. Like we need to be in, we're always striving for homeostasis in our cells. Without hydration, you're not in homeostasis. And, um, and that is, and, and that's exactly right. And then the other, so the output is absolutely as important. So we, you know, we need hydration in order to pee and to poop and to sweat um, and that is absolutely a part of hydration if you're not if you're whole, if you're not peeing you're dehydrated you know so is, it's is somebody who sweats a lot does that mean that they a are so like their cells are saturated and um hydrated and that's why they're maybe sweating more or are they trying to sweat to because their body's just trying to get rid of stuff or regulate yeah. temperature or I wish I knew because I definitely <laughs> there are some. I, I think people who are more physically fit sweat better, more effective than than people who are not. Um, but then there are just people who sweat. I don't. I don't think we really know um, what that is. But th- but there's probably an element of all of that um, too. So yeah, you're you're sweating because your body wants to get rid of it, but you're also um, hydrating properly. So but I don't, I don't think we have good answers on that. Okay. Now, um, a question. When you talk about homeostasis, the pH balance of, let's say it's there, all our cells, if we're dehydrated, can that affect our pH balance? Huh, well, that's a good question. If, we're, if we are dehydrated, can it affect our pH balance? And I'll tell you why I asked that, because in the book, which I love, you have um, – well, there's a menu. There's there's foods and everything, and there's some foods that are really um, dehydrating, and then you have some foods that are hydrating, which we can talk about. And I would love that. But I was that made me think. Oh my gosh, what if I'm, my diet is really have a lot of dehydrating foods, but I notice there are also a lot of acidic foods, like like cereal, dry foods and meats and and stuff that would dry it. And that's that's the only reason why I ask about that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, I don't know the answer because because the truth is water is is not necessary necessarily a buffer um, right. you know so I don't I honestly don't know the answer to that um, well, that's okay that's yeah cool. we'll water is tough. if you add water to an acid it's not going to make it basic because it's right, something right. There that's buffering so I'm not sure Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, some of the things that we you you mentioned too, and I would love you to talk about this one. That water itself, the quality of the water, really matters. Okay. So let's let's talk about let's let's get into the science because this is this is the reason we both wrote the book. This to me is mind blowing information. So um, we talked, you know, I said eight glasses a day is not the most effective way. And the reason for that is that there's a new form of water that's been um, published and researched and talked about. Um, So think about that statement. We know that water exists as liquid, ice, and vapor, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So now there is a different phase of water that exists in our cells. um, And this water, we call it, mostly in the book, we call it gel water. Um, But it's also known as structured water or ordered water or easy water. There's lots of different names for it. Um, And and it's um, it's this other phase of water. And it it basically has to do with how the how the water molecule, you know, this simple H2O water molecule. What in my research learned is not simple at all. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I had no idea how complicated this subject was when we first started writing this book. (laughs) Uh, Oh my goodness, Pandora's Um, box here. Yes. 
It really is. But um, when these water molecules like lay upon each other or line up against each other, they start to share electrons, and it's in that electron sharing that causes, that forms this other phase of water, mm. and um, this gel phase of water, and it holds on, it, it has an electrical charge, and, and therefore it, it's more energizing, it's more fuel for your body. And so not only is that the type of water that's in our cells, it also happens to be the type of water that's found in nature, in, mm -hmm. in plants, in fruits and vegetables, um, in things like, you know, one of the things we talked about desert people. Think about how cactus plants hydrate. They hydrate via gels. You're, if you've ever opened, um, and hopefully we'll talk about an aloe leaf, mm -hmm. there's all that gel that falls out. So good, you know. Mm -hmm. So. So that is that the, that's the qual that's the kind of quality and that and that gel water is um, it's it's naturally pure and naturally it purifies itself. It's it's very interesting in in how this is whole thing works. Is spring water um, or lake water? Where would we find structured water? So yeah, I mean I think you know in like waterfalls, I think some of that oh. is going in and out of the phase, and that's very like if you ever if you ever walked up to a waterfall, you feel that energy. Yeah. Um, it's it's energized water, um, spring water. Yeah, that's loaded with um, you know minerals from a spring. So minerals also help make um, make structured oh. water. Um, so giving it those electrolytes that give that the electrical charge that we need. Um, so yeah, spring water. In fact, we rec in the book we talk about. Um, there's a website called www.findaspring.com. You know, and it's basically go and 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 bottle your own water. Like get some glass bottles, and and there's no better better thing to do and drink. Um, you know, that's the easiest thing. It's it's a little bit of a pain, but it's so good for you. <laughs> but it's so worth it. And as we go to commercial right now, we come back. We're, this is like we we literally have just touched the tip of the iceberg of this water. <laughs> <laughs> the best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Welcome back to The Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right. A group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Art Council. We are back, and we are sharing this lovely time with Dr. Dana Cohen. She's the co-author with Gina Bria of Quench. And why I'm so excited to be talking about, well, water and hydration and dehydration is I, it literally con is controlling. It's a huge part. It plays a giant role that we can't even imagine in literally every part of our lives, from how our brains are functioning, our attention span, our focus, to our energy levels of our body, and right down to even how our, our organs are working for our health. And 
I'm, you know what, I'm, I'm looking through the book again, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I still want to talk about spinal health and fascia and, and how this is done, but we're, we're talking about structured water and how there is a certain type of water that can get into our cells and we can absorb it much better than other water. And I'm going to ask you now, Dr. Dana Cohen, is if it's not structured water, can we even get, like, can it even get to our cells? Yeah, I mean, I think we need water. I mean, there's yeah. still no doubt that we need water. In fact, there's been some recent um, evidence that shows we, we need we need three things. We need water. We need greens, chlorophyll, which is um, you know the the green pigment found in plants, and we need sunlight um, in order to create energy, which is really interesting. Another mm-hmm. sort of mind blowing thing because we are we are way more like plants. That we ever really knew, and that's that is that is the basis of photosynthesis. <laughs> so, so yes, we still need water, um, but once again, this this gel water or structured water is um, it's just sort of revolutionary because we can drink less liquid, um, yet stay more hydrated. So in the book, we talk about um, I think we mention an apple and a bottle of water is more hydrating than two bottles of water. Um, and the reason is that apple and the, the nutrients and the electrolytes and the fiber that you get from the apple really helps that water get into your cells better and hold on to it better. I love that. I did read that. I And I thought, oh, my gosh. And see, it's not just – it's just funny. I, I do love the science behind it because often I'll think I, – I eat a ton of fruits and vegetables. And – they're really liquidy and watery, and, and and they're also whole, and I eat a lot of seeds and nuts, especially the cheese seeds, and you have so many great little drinks and smoothies. Oh, if we can even talk about the smoothie, why is a smoothie better than just chewing and eating food? Because that one was, I was like, oh, that's an even more, you know, it's a, even more of a benefit um, to oh, making yeah. a smoothie. A smoothie is just jam-packed with nutrients and tons of greens, and you're just, you know, you're getting it all in there. Um, the And I, I would even suffice to say that, like, one smoothie is probably equivalent to three times the amount of water as from a hydration standpoint. You know, I don't have science to back that mm-hmm. up, but, but I know it. I just know it. I yeah. know it. From, I feel it. And I, I, I've experimented with myself. I've, I've, I remember going to a conference in Las Vegas, and I drank water all day long, oh. and I couldn't get hydrated. There was nothing I could do. I'd get up and pee. My pee was clear. Nothing, you know, I was basically right. just flushing out electrolytes. And then when I, when I switched it up and drank and ate my water, <laughs> literally in the form of smoothies and fruits and vegetables, I stayed better hydrated. I thought better. By the end of the day, I wasn't exhausted. You know, I, my brain was still functioning, sitting in that, in that room for eight hours listening to lectures all day. So, um, and people will really notice a difference. You could do we, the five-day plan is so easy, and you'll notice a difference in very short in a very short amount of time in how you feel. So it's you know what it's, uh, this five-day plan, which is first of all has tremendous like fun foods. I, I love food, and there's so many. I'm like, oh, I gotta have that. I gotta have this. But it's really interesting. And I will I will support what you're saying. I don't have the science behind it too, but I have this like never-ending energy. It seems, and it's. I know it's because I eat very hydrating foods and fibers, and I drink aloe vera gel, like the, the inner fillet. Uh, you can get them in liquid, and I just do a quarter cup. And I was just doing it for to have great skin, but here now we know why, because it's actually hydrating my skin. <laughs> Yes. Let's talk about aloe for a second. I love yeah. aloe. Um, yeah. Aloe, there's a couple of foods I want to talk about. So yeah. let's, gel water is found, almost every vegetable has, um, green vegetable has over 90% water. And, it, and, oh. it's, and most of that water is in that gel form. So let's, the one thing I'd like oh. to just always mention is that, you know, we've always sort of vilified iceberg lettuce. <laughs> Um, it would have no nutritional value. It's probably one of the most nutrient-rich things because of how hydrating it is, you know. Oh, my so, goodness. That yeah. right now, I want to highlight that. So the iceberg round head of lettuce that we always think, ugh, you know, has it's no actually, nothing to oh it. It's good for you. Yeah, it's, re- it's really super hydrating. You can actually, if you if you open it, you can see the, you know, yeah. the sort of gel in, in the veins of it. Um, so, so let's talk about aloe. You know, aloe is, um, I'm sure people know, I mean, I grew up in Florida, so we used to cut oh, it. If yeah. I got a burn, you'd cut it and take that gel out and put it on, you know, topically. Yeah. Um, but now we know that internally that gel um, is, is, it can help with heartburn, it can help with constipation, it can help lower your blood sugar. There's so many benefits to it, but it's also really hydrating. 
So you can add that gel to your smoothies or drink it as a juice. I see aloe juice now everywhere. Uh, every every even little bodega store on my, my corner carries aloe vera juice, and it's great for you. Um, so I love aloe. Um, I want to talk about a couple of other foods that I think are super hydrating, other than, you know, the, the book gives over 50 smoothie recipes. We talk about many, many different fruits and vegetables. But um, being that it's summer and we um, – and the book has just came out on Tuesday. I'm going to give you a couple of my favorite foods. You mentioned one of them already, and that's chia seeds. Chia mm-hmm. seeds to me are, you know, on top of the list of superfoods. They, um, they're, you know, they're very high in omega-3 fatty acids, so good for inflammation. Um, they can help suppress your appetite. They help with endurance. We talk about um, some some anthropological evidence of these tribes, the Tarahumari tribes, who used to run 50-mile marathons using chia seeds to hydrate. And sort of, yeah, remarkable, remarkable stories about chia seeds. So I love, I love chia. You can make little chia. There's recipes all, all online everywhere for chia puddings, which are just, you could do coconut water and chia seeds. And, and the other thing was my, my uh, co-author gave chia seeds to her mother in the nursing home who was, who was suffering from dehydration. And she basically had them put a little chia seeds in her orange juice in the morning, and that really sustained her better throughout the day. And she wasn't getting um, urinary tract infections. She was hydrating better when she just by doing that. So I love chia seeds. You know, that story, by the way, when, when um, they spoke about her mom um, having, like, severe dehydration and, and – all these reasons why why it was hard to get get her to have the water thing, but when she changed those diets, that, that actually that story was the most first of all heartwarming story to find out that that happened and how simple and easy that is, and that's just like that's just a heartwarming story about seniors. I love that. Yeah, yeah, incredible, and that's actually one of the one of the things that her and I bonded on. My mom too mm-hmm. was was in a nursing home, same same thing, suffered from Alzheimer's, except I was I was still a medical student. I didn't have a lot of. Um, I couldn't, it was, it was interesting. I couldn't, I didn't have the wherewithal to be able to help my mom in those ways. And I'm so proud of Gina. Like she really, uh, yeah, incredible. So other, other things I'd love to talk about, um, lychee fruits. Um, I don't know if you've ever, um, had a lychee, uh, you know, speaking of anthropological uh, stories, ancient Chinese princesses used to have their aides get them, make them uh, lychee fruits because it's really good for your skin. Um, and I have a feeling it's good for your skin because it's so hydrating. Um, and, you know, a lychee fruit, they're these little red things. You pop them open. They're unbelievably delicious. How would we um, pick one? Like, how do you know when one is ready to, like, ripen to, to eat? Oh, you know, I, I've never picked one. I always buy them. I buy oh, them. Yeah. They are they're very seasonal. So I and I have to tell you, I found them in once again in my little bodega. I live in, in New York City. Across the street had these little cartons of of lychee fruit. So they're um, and they were all delicious. So I'm not sure what to. I, I don't. You know, I've never seen one picked. So okay. I don't know. So what's there in, <laughs> is there in the store? Are they soft though? When you eat them, are they hard? They're, they're, water. they're a little on the softer side. So, yeah, when you open a lychee fruit, basically you just take your thumbnail, pop that skin open, and then pop the whole thing in your mouth. There's a pit inside, so you just sort of eat around the pit. And it's, it's I mean, it's it's very sort of slimy, but Ooh. incredibly delicious. It's gel. That's the, it's gel. the gel water. That's the gel. Ah. Um, and so you can, you can actually, there's a couple things you can do. And lychee, uh, I mean, it's, it's great for metabolism and weight loss and a diuretic. Um, and I typically will throw a couple in and just infuse it in, in water because it has such a, a delicious mm-hmm. taste. I will say a couple things I want to say about lychee fruit, though. It's very seasonal, hard to get um, uh, if it's not in season, and, um, and it's very high in sugar. So we do need to be oh, a little careful with, with so much seasonal fruit. You know, often what I'll do is, I, we talked about this too, I, I take a lot of supplements. I supplement, there's a supplement called oligonol, which has, um, it's made from the skin of lychee. So it has all of those benefits. Oh. Um, and, and it's actually, it's been shown to help decrease belly fat. It also helps from, from protect you from um, ultraviolet radiation. So very Ooh. high antioxidant. It's, a, it's an incredible supplement. I'll it, either it, take it or I'll put it in my smoothie. I'll open the capsule and just throw it right in my smoothie also. And that would help with the hydration? Like, yeah, yeah, even you're getting those benefits. Oh. Yeah, it's changing the structure of the water because it's adding, um, it's adding um, electrolytes and antioxidants, so yes. So you um, mentioned about uh, UV protection there. That is super interesting because that would actually then help 
with our own bodies creating some kind of sun, prote- sun block, sun protection, um, yeah. and water loss at the same time. Because I know even myself, I'm really aware of going out in the sun because um, of hyperpigmentation, you know, on, especially on my face and stuff. So now I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, I want to take, al- what did you call it, alignol? No, oligonol, O-L-I-G-O-N-O-L. Yeah, it's a great, it's a, it's a great supplement. I really like it. There's oh. over 30 human clinical studies on it, too. You know, wow. it's funny you talk about the UV. I know um, who's the quarterback for – God, I'm going to sound so uh, – the quarterback for the um, Massachusetts um, – oh, my God, he's married to the supermodel. Um, oh, no, you know, and I – football season hasn't started yet until August. It's like, oh, my goodness. I, I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so he's yeah, like the yeah. world's greatest quarterback, so handsome. Um, you know, he recently came out with a thing that he believes he is protected from the sun because he drinks – and a crazy amount of water, um, and, I, and I think he lives such a healthy diet. So there's something interesting about that. I think if we have, if we're super hydrated, there is a protection factor there, other than the um, the antioxidant benefit too. So so it's interesting. <laughs> well, and talking about the sun for a second. So when we do want the sun, I mean, we're sweating a lot, and right. um, you, there was a test uh, that we had in the book kind of like just like an observation test about um, weighing yourself just before working out and how much water weight you do lose after right. you work out so you can kind of test the level which you're dehydrated. Yeah. Brady, I mean, Tom it, Brady. Sorry, Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know who this is. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, Tom, if yeah. you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a football um, fan. That's why I was like, I have to be able to remember this. <laughs> okay. No, we're yes, such girls. <laughs> yeah. So when we, like, that was really, so I know sometimes when I go all day long, let's say, and I, um, I, I trampoline, so I use my little rebounder and I do my yoga oh, and all that stuff. And then if I, if I go a long time without, I think, oh my goodness, wow, maybe I, I lost some weight by working out. I melted fat away, but really I actually could be dehydrated. This is awful. <laughs> Yeah, Not a good thing. yeah, that's actually. I mean, it's it's a really if you're if you're um, if you're more than just a gentle sort of exerciser. Um, and you're exercising for more than 45 minutes to an hour, it's not a bad idea to weigh yourself pre and post and just kind of see how much water you've lost and then what you need to maybe replenish. Um, it's actually a, it's a, it's a really nice rule of thumb to do that. And, and so if you're going to replenish, you should replenish with electrolytes too. So even we, we give a do-it-yourself sports drink in there that's, that's not loaded with, you know, that you do it yourself, literally mm-hmm. no chemicals, no food additives. Not a lot of sugar. We, if you want, we need a little sugar though. If you're, especially if you're exercising, so maple syrup or honey, you know, is a, is a much better way than all the. And you do have that list. Yes, I love this book. Yeah. The back is so good. Right now, I'm looking at it, and I love that you answer the coffee question because everybody's going to ask that, and you give an alternative too. So share with us about coffee, coffee and tea, or coffee, caffeine. Sure, coffee. Um, so. Anything over four cups of coffee is going to become a diuretic. Anything under four cups of coffee is not. So um, I am a I drink a cup of coffee a day or two, um, and I am I am fine with it. And I think you know I try to drink good coffee because there is some there is some nice antioxidant benefits of coffee now too that we're learning. Um, it's often all the excuse you know crap that you put in your coffee too that's the problem. People people are putting you know, sweeteners and so much sugar and, and fake sweeteners, which is even worse than sugar, you know, that I think is the problem. But anything under four cups, um, I have no problems with. Right. And I like to mention to everybody, that would be four measured cups and <laughs> not the size Thank of, like, you. four large. <laughs> Thank you. Great, great, great point. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. measuring up here. But you have this thing, and I love that you talk about it, um, I want to talk about mushrooms for a second because you mentioned a reishi coffee. Uh, I love, I love that. Now, does do mushrooms and all fungi have that plant gel, or are they are they water based? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know off the top of my head the um, what do you call it? The water content of mushrooms. I'm right, sure yeah. I can find it somewhere pretty easily. But but yeah, they they do they do have some some hydrating benefit. I I think with mushrooms, the benefit also is is real more medicinal actually. Yes. Yeah. Than, oh, yeah, than hydrating because they do have some some very powerful medicinal properties. You know, speaking of supplements, um, I, 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 there's a supplement called AHCC, active hexose yes. correlated. I use that. Um, 
that is one of the most immune boosting supplements and it's basically a mixture of all of the, the good healthy mushrooms and it's one of the most immune boosting products I've ever I've ever used or worked with and it really um, once again many human clinical trials on it it's used in Japan in hospitals for immune system it's also used for cancer patients incredible and they're starting to use it at Memorial Sloan Kettering too which is the the you know the big cancer hospital here in New York so very interesting. Mushrooms are, are a fascinating subject for me. They are. Yeah, that'll be your next book, right? <laughs> and Maybe, I will, yes. And I will <laughs> love that book, too. And actually, I just learned of, I call it the OSS, because A-H-C-C, because um, I, I just, one of my um, newest uh, clients, she's going through radiation, uh, chemotherapy and radiation, so that was where that came up. But um, that is just fantastic. Now, like, the... I, wait, I'm going to check my time for a commercial. Okay, so we've got two minutes, but I want to um, just share with people a little bit. So, We've got our food. We know there's certain foods that help help up absorb it and then everything. And the water. And we at one point I got to go talk about the spring water and the waterfalls and we should bottle it. But what if we cannot do that or just don't want to? Um, is reverse osmosis something we should be doing? Um, can we buy structured water somewhere? How do we create that water? Yeah. So you know, once again, the book is um, the book is about um, eating more plants and vegetables um, and getting your hydration that uh, way. We don't um, we don't we don't we don't delve into um, filters. Although yes, I think reverse osmosis is probably the best thing to do, but you're going to have to replenish the minerals if you do that. Uh, you know, so um, there is a great website called um, www ewg.org so it's the environmental working group and they have a they give you a list of filter I trust them implicitly this is an incredible organization you should you should give them money there they really are doing Aww. they're the ones who talk about the dirty dozen fruits and vegetables yeah. that you should you know so they have a list of the best filters for your budget um, if you're going to filter water um, and and I, I've sort of pushed that off onto them <laughs> okay, okay. That's great. I love that. Now, we all going to go to commercial, but when we get back, this is going to be a crazy thing about how meditation and spinal movements can help with dehydration. of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free AscendingHearts.com Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with. All day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up. Like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Right. We are here with Dana Cohen, MD, and she's the co-author of Quench with Gina Bria. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give one of my biggest endorsements ever. 
what I feel about this book, because I'm this excited about it, is it's called Quench. And I was, as I'm reading it, I truly believe and feel that anybody who reads this book, I think everybody should read this book, but you will deepen your relationship with yourself. And I know it's a big, I'm making a big statement, a big claim there, but we are, when we should be, and hopefully we all are, about 70% water. So as we really increase the absorption levels and our own levels of hydration and we understand how it works like you literally will change your life and that's why I love this book because it has this five-day plan um, super easy makes sense it's everything and I'm excited to go in and talk about even how meditation and spinal moves and everything how that really affects your own water level your hydration levels water levels and can like if you wouldn't, could imagine changing your energy level or just your brain, how your brain can focus and just all that, that would literally be life-changing. So I want to thank you, Dana, for writing this. Oh, uh, Lisa, thank you. I'm welling up. Thank you. Oh. I'm, I'm so proud of this book. I truly think it's going to help a lot of people. And, and you know, the book really found us. And mm-hmm. um, and it was a calling. It was a calling That's when beautiful. you came into my office. It really, uh, I do think that, uh, you know, it's 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 going to help so many people. Um, yeah. And and we tried to write it in the sense of even if you're if you're uh, blending your you're making smoothies, go buy a five dollar blender at a at a thrift store. It doesn't have to be a Vitamix, the four hundred dollar Vitamix, you know. So we really tried to write it to uh, to help everybody. Thank and thank you. you for even saying that. Um, you're right. It doesn't need to be fancy. I actually posted on my Facebook page. Um, I have a citrus juicer that I bought at a yard sale for $5 a couple of years ago, like almost probably 10 now. And I love using that thing. And I feel actually better that I only paid $5 for it. It's awesome. It's awesome. But I'm, I love it. See, the lemon. Oh, I, I have a question. It's a personal question, a my lifestyle question. So um, I would love to put lemon in my water all day long. However, I would like to protect my teeth as well. So does the does using, let's say, an essential oil of lemon in like a drop of that in my water, is that still helping me with the hydration um, or do I need the, the actual lemon juice? Oh, so you're asking if, uh, if you put it, wait, ask your question again, are you putting a oh. set, lemon essential oil instead of the lemon juice? Yeah, like if I'm using like, or just the rind, because I know that, you know, the oils are from the the rind there. Is that helping me to still stay hydrated? Because I just, yeah. you know, I don't want to be killing my teeth all the time. Right? Yeah, no, I think I think it, it definitely changes the structure of that water. Yeah, it adds, um, you know, I, I, I can't remember what's in the, I, I think that oil from the rind. I mean, we, there's, we would do a whole chapter on fats. Um, in the book, and that's a really important chapter because we need fats also to um, to get the water into our cells. Our cells, the the cell wall is made of fat, so um, it's it's important. But yeah, the oil in that is also, yeah, I think it's going to change the structure of the water. I love that so you both. highlighted I think that. That's a good point. Yeah, people who drink way too much lemon juice all day long and you're sipping at it, it definitely can have an effect on your teeth. So yeah. that's actually a very good point. And I know I'm glad that you just said about the fats. Like, I this is something. So, if somebody's on a fat restricted diet, this is very dehydrating. I mean, this is this is not good for us. We we need those fats, the healthy fats, to 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 do all that. And well, we could stay on fats if you want to talk about fats a little bit here, because it's your favorite food. And then I can jump into my meditation and move. Okay. So <laughs> let me say one thing about fats. So yes, you mentioned a, a, a fat, a low fat diet, but also um, a, a ketogenic diet, which is often what I'll, I'll do every so often, which is incredibly high in fats, is dehydrating as well. Um, so, so many mo- metabolic diets, you know, I, I always tell people if you're going to do a ketogenic diet, um, if, you know, most people need some kind of rule of thumb. So, so if it's not eight glasses of water a day, I'll often say, okay, well, then half your weight in, in, um, in ounces of water, right? So if you're on a ketogenic diet, you really should be getting at least three quarters of your weight in in liquid um, or in water if you're not eating a lot of hydrating foods because in a keto diet, and and a lot of people are doing it, and there's definitely some great health benefits to it. So um, we have to be a little careful about hydration and and that as well, and and definitely a low-fat diet. Okay, so that's one extra smoothie. So every of of what you can eat on a keto diet for that, yes, one extra, extra everything. (laughs) Yeah, half to to three quarters. (laughs) And um, some of the um, 
actually a lot of them. I know we talked about chia because that's a really great thing, but even like coconut, uh, coconut. And you know what's funny? When I'm thirsty, and I know now I feel bad because I'm going, gosh, if I was actually thirsty, I'm way past dehydration. But I'll actually take a half a teaspoon of coconut oil and just kind of lubricate my mouth, and that's how I feel. Then you know, just having a drink of water. <laughs> and and my father, because he's older, obviously, and we just did a big move. And the poor guy, he was he was just so thirsty the whole time. And I'm like, oh my god, Dad, go go get a tablespoon of olive oil or something, and just like you know <laughs> so the yeah. oils are helpful for that too like you said they, the cells they go hand in hand too you know speaking of uh, going back to the coffee thing um that you know we call it bulletproof coffee now which is basically yeah. coconut oil and butter in your coffee um it's incredibly hydrating um and it's actually an ancient um himalayan once again Gina, um, her oh. in her anthropological studies, found that that's actually very ancient recipes. These Himalayan people would put sort of yak butter into their into their drinks to to hydrate them. So so interesting. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yak tea. Yeah. And um, it, I I can't remember where it was that I learned years ago. I was putting ghee in my in my tea, and um, I saw it on a show. But because they're up in Himalayan mountains, they have a lot of wind, and they get wind burn. And so they were putting the the ghee on their cheeks so that you know they wouldn't. When we get chat lips and our skin is dry, are we like super duper like we're we're in trouble? We're dehydrated. Yeah, I think so. You're definitely you're yeah. That's a that's a problem. Okay. <laughs> you know, yes. a good uh, one of the things I didn't talk about earlier is if you if you look at the top of your hand and pinch the skin on the top of your hand, it should go right back down into place. If it tenses up for more than a second or two, you're dehi- you're dehydrated. You need more more fluid. Ah, and I'll tell you what I'm thinking about older people right now because their their skin actually just stays all up and raised. Yeah. Yeah. Quite often. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I want to give everybody in in a retirement home or seniors home. I want to get your book there. I want to get everybody in there having this book. <laughs> uh, I know it really would help a lot. I mean, it's so simple. It is. You know what? Actually, I have a lady. Oh, I can't. I'm trying to think of her name right now. Gosh, I am going to get it to her. But um, let's talk about spinal um, spinal mood, spinal fluid. I was so happy to read this um, and dry brushing and meditation. If we can squeeze all of that in, that would be great. Okay. All right. Let's okay. let's get into it. Let me tell you really quickly why we talk about movement. Um, recently, there's been a discovery, yet a third mind blowing discovery that we talk about in the book, of. Um, We've, the fascia. Fascia is the connective tissue in our body that envelopes every organ, every cell. It's, it's this webbing network all over our body. Fascia has never been studied before. It's only oh. ever been looked at as like a dried, desiccated cadaver. So they, they, and they basically sort of take it out and throw it aside. Oh. A few years ago, this brilliant French doctor decided to put a, a camera under the skin and look at living fascia. And what he discovered and what we, what we see is that fascia is a transport system. It's a hydraulic pump. So it, it moves fluid and it moves um, electricity and it's fascinating. And it's, there's so much research coming out about fascia. Um, we, and what's mind-blowing is that we've only ever thought that fluid gets pushed via blood and capillaries and lymph. Now there's, you know, fascia. So the idea of you have to move in order to lubricate your joints, now we really understand why. So when we're sitting all day, we're squelching the delivery of water to our extremities, to the bottom. You know, we need to get up and move. And so we talk about in the book these micro-movements. They're very simple, like literally bobbing your head up and down or moving your, your chin to your shoulder is is moving fluid in and out of your brain. Um, you know, so it's it's... It's that the is amazing. half of the hydration equation. That is a huge, and you know what's funny? So I'm I'm fairly fit and healthy and all that good stuff. That I I just shared on a couple of shows ago that I was experiencing knee pain, and I thought this is not. I experience knee pain, but what it is is I sit on the floor cross-legged a lot, and now you're making, this is what, from from reading this, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm probably, the pain's coming from me trapping my fluid and my water there. So um, from now on, even right now, I'm going to start just moving my skin around, just kind of wiggling it around on the knee and getting that fluid <laughs> going. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, we, we talk about there's some fidget studies in the book. So even just small little movements of fidgeting, literally you're just fidgeting your leg. Um, and they've shown that, you know, people who fidget one leg versus the other, like that leg is healthier, the cells are healthier. Um, so it's very interesting, the littlest That's movement. Cool. 
itself can can give you a big sort of bang for your buck. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Love, love, love that. Now, why the heck would um, meditation hydrate us? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, I, I think for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, when we sleep is when we detoxify. Mm. Um, and once again, it's that outflow. There's, you know, hydration is not just the inflow, it's the outflow. And it's only in sleep and deep meditative states is when we detoxify. So, I, you know, I, and I, that to me is the more the bigger sure. picture of why it's important, you know, the, the the detoxification, the meditation, the calming. But then I think there is such a relationship between um, endorphins and neurotransmitters, and when you're calming all that down, your body's not working so hard to um, to to process uh, everything. So um, I don't I don't think there's a whole lot of science behind that, but I think it's really intuitive. That when we're when we're meditating and when we're calming everything down, our, we're not using as much energy, so so you're 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 not using up your hydration stores. That's right. Yes, you're actually hanging on to that water a little bit. And um, my favorite one is um, dry brushing. And I know we're back to the skin and the movement, the the muscles and fascia a little bit. But just to, so dry brushing is just one of my favorite. As a woman, I love dry brushing because it helps you know keep you know keep cellulite away. But there's a reason. And um, it, but there's so much more. I mean, it feels good. I mean, everybody likes you know some people like to have their back scratched or tickled. But then we can do our dry brushing on our legs. But this is this does that and so much more and so is that hydrating us because of just the lymph like explain the dry brushing a little bit to everybody you know so a dry brushing is basically taking a um a natural bristle bri- natural bristle brush <laughs> yeah. and, um, and you and you just lightly brush your skin and you and you always want to do it towards your heart um you know it's interesting i i just thought of something i wonder and we've always known we've always thought that dry brushing really helps lymph flow and it does mm-hmm. But I wonder if it's really if it's more fascia related. Yeah. And it's yeah, probably I'm thinking both. That. You know, it's probably both. But it's it's moving that fluid once again, it's moving that fluid around and getting it to where we need. You know, I used to have a massage therapist who told me she's like, I'm basically a um I, I she said I'm a blood mover. So she thought she <sighs> moved blood. And that's, you know, when we move fluid, we're getting nutrients and blood and everything to where, to places where we don't, you know, where it doesn't go as easily. So, and there's something, you know, there, our bodies are amazing machines. If we give it what it needs to do its job, there is so much we don't even know about what's, you know, what kind of healing things are in our bloods. And as we move them to where they need to be, what are they doing? How are they anti-inflammatory? How are these cytokines and these cells getting to where they need to get and do their job? So, um, yeah, dry brushing is simple. I mean, you, you feel, I know, I feel energized mm-hmm. after I do it all the time. Yes, and it's actually quite a good workout. Those little tiny muscles, when you have to dry brush yourself, I mean, my arm, I go, I only can do one leg at a time, and I just start getting tired. But, um, you know, I love, I love that you said that. Our bodies literally have, they are magical. They're they are powerful. They can do everything. We don't even have to think about it. We don't have to think, okay, I'll send this white cell out, and I'll send this over here. We just have to give it what it needs to do its best. And um, I have to just highlight this, the name of this book again. It's called Quench. Eight glasses a day is not the way. I love that. Beat fatigue, drop weight, and heal your body through the new science of optimal hydration. We're, this is Dana Cohen that we're talking to, but she did co-write it with Gina Brea. And I love that you always um, refer to her and how, you know, the book came to you. The book found you. I love that you say that. Um, and now I feel like the book found me. And <laughs> Thank you. And, if there was just a few um, things you'd like to say about the book and how we can, where can we buy the book and, and find you and, and do all these kind of things? Excellent. So um, the book is available wherever books are sold. You can get it on Amazon or BarnesandNoble.com. Um, if it's not in your bookstore, ask. You can ask the manager to purchase it. I would love that. Yes. But it's but it's pretty much everywhere. And um, you can also check out our websites. Gina runs the hydrationfoundation.org. Lots of oh. information on her website. My website is www.drdanacohen.com. Um, and you can find me on social media. Let me, you know, let me know. Reach out to me. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, and uh, and yeah, once again, I, I, I'm I'm really proud of this book, and I think it's. Uh, 
it's definitely a book for um, you could get your loved ones, and, and everybody's going to mm-hmm. benefit from it. I just yes, this this book is so good. And often, um, just my because I have to talk about cats. So the one thing, the one thing I always do is I check the cat's food. Like it's it's not okay just to feed your animals just dry kibble. They need moisture just like we do. Um, and to you know just moisture. There's two things that I love that you're highlighting. It's not just about what we take in. Um, it's the form that comes in, but it's also the output and what we can do inside of our body without even going inside of our body with those, you know, moving the skin and muscles around and, and everything. And I can't wait. Are you on Facebook as well? I am on Facebook, uh, drdanacohen.com. I mean, okay. Dana Cohen, oh. yeah. Yes, okay, because I know that's the first place I want to go and to have everybody else go to, or you can always come to me, Lisa Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, and then if you think, oh, what was that show on that hydration? But also, I just want to say, the cover of this book is just light and refreshing, and it makes you want to read it, and it's just everything about this. I really, it's just like my favorite book. <laughs> oh, Lisa, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. That really, um, I have chills all over. It made my day. Thank Aww. you. Well, thank you so much, and I am, it, when you do the book on mushrooms, if that if that happens to find you, I would be so happy to read that one as well. But um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone, for serving us. You guys all go get hydrated and do your test to find out and let, let Dr. Uh, Dana Cohen know how you're doing with your hydration. She wants to know. She wants to know that you've, got, you've learned something from this book. And everybody go do your fidgeting and twists and meditation and chia seed and all that good. And lychee. And lychee. <laughs> I love it. Love uh, it. Thanks, Dana. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.